devil got my tongue once again, but there will be some cussing in this episode of Bewitched Banter. Content is not suitable for all listeners. You have been warned. to Bewitch Banter. I'm Krista, and I believe that people are inherently shitty. And I'm Amy, and I tend to believe that people are naturally good. But ironically, I'm a super believer in the supernatural and all things spiritual. And I'm a total skeptic. We're best friends, and in this podcast, we're seeking to explore and understand each other's perspectives with deep dives into the spooky, the spiritual, the magical, and the mystical. And some straight up spoofs. Today... It is Witching Hour Story Time! Woohoo! And we'll be covering Satanism! Woo-hoo. If you didn't listen to our episode on Tuesday, definitely pull it up. It'll explain to you exactly what Satanism is. It's not worshiping the devil. It is Spoiler not. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not uh, the Satan that they picture on South Park that's like a big ass evil red horned thing with hooves. Um, Should we it, cheers though? Yeah, Wait. let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. We're cheers both, to Satanism. Yeah, honestly, after uh, Amy and I discussed it, we both may or may not be uh, joining the Church of Satanism. <laughs> yeah, tell us if we're drinking the Kool Aid. I mean, <laughs> but it, I mean, frankly, going within and uh, putting yourself first, it, I there's no shame in that. I feel like Oprah always preached that. She did. There's there's your Oprah reference again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have one every episode for you. Oh, um, that reminds me. Um, I know you're not gonna talk you know you're not gonna know what I'm talking about, but I watched uh, Harry Potter had a twenty year anniversary and they all get together. Oh my god. Oh the actors, right? Yeah. Okay. I did not imagine that special was gonna make me cry so much. Oh no. <laughs> and, and then I watched I finally finished uh, Shit's Creek. Oh my god! Wait, you didn't finish it yet? I just finished it last night. I thought night. you did. And then I David. And then I went to watch a documentary about them filming the last six six seasons, and I was crying to that. And okay, I, was like, I cried on the part where Dan Levy, um, or Levy. I always screw up the pronunciation. I think it's Levy. 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 Yeah. He did. Did you get the part where? Oh my god! I'm gonna cry thinking about it. Is I watch it, of course, right in the fucking crux of my divorce process last winter. And um, he said something to the effect of about um, Alexis and Ted not working out as it, it was still a love story, but it was a love story of love that didn't work out because of their circumstances. And those circumstances were their own growth. That stood oh, in the I way. thought that was beautiful. The way they put it. I cried so hard when I heard that because it touched my heart and frankly that's what happened in my relationship if anyone's ever wondering uh people what, probably are wondering you know that's basically what happened uh one day we'll tell you the dirty very details. very what? complex <laughs> but that that's on a very deep level like honestly what it was if I'm being authentic it really it was that I'm growing so is the ex and uh we didn't grow together frankly is what happened we grew apart so but for the benefit of ourselves, which is ultimately Satanism at its core. So, yeah. Yeah, I just want to tell you, I watched because I know I'm a Harry Potter enthusiast. I did not think that was going to make me cry. Then the shit's creak. Oh, I went yeah. to bed. I was like, damn, I cried so much tonight. But they were all like happy <laughs> tears. Yeah, it was a good one. I, I don't know. It was like, a, I don't know, a nice night. Just watching a lot of TV, not doing much. I love those nights. Yeah, because it was I honestly like a fir- first week back to reality after two weeks off after Christmas oh, is yeah. soul crushing. I'll Girl, put that about out there. Four months off, three months off in my case. <laughs> but you were dying to go to work, weren't you? I was. I I needed some intellectual adult conversations other than my parents. So yeah, for me, it's like two weeks off wasn't enough, and I was like. I think for, I don't know if everyone else is like me, but for me, like after a really good vacation or like good break, it takes me like a week to kind of get back to reality and be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always hard. You always, that joke about like needing a vacation from a vacation is like so true just by the nature of how we live here in the States. Well, you like mourn the fact that it's over. Cause I was like, I was surrounded with family all the time, mm-hmm. doing what the hell I wanted. And then it's like back to the grind. And I was like, damn, they need like, don't even, girl. 
But I really feel like they should give you a day off just to mourn. <laughs> you have to be back. <laughs> day off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so Satanism would tell me to put myself first. So maybe I just need to quit. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> it, it was just an adjustment back. How was your How was your first week? It was so good. I absolutely love my team and um and the access that I get being part of the team I am, which is media relations. I see things from a whole other perspective of this massive university that I had never seen before. So it's it's been really cool. Like I'm the first to know things, or among the first. Of course, okay, my team so too. you gotta tell me. I'll keep Whenever you in the loop. Don't you yeah. worry. <laughs> but uh, if there's any good news or bad news, I, yeah. want, I want to know. I mean, because it is our job to manage the crises, which would technically be bad news about the brand. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. I um, will be doing a lot of writing. I'm back to my creative self and vibe, which is exactly where I'm meant to be um, with journalists and creatives and thinkers and and writers. And it's like, wow, this role is awesome for me yeah it's awesome so great week there's two uh folks i work with are hilarious i was telling you uh i think yesterday and just like old newspaper men but they're like really funny even though they're dad jokes they're like just really funny and like so so i mean nothing's wrong with the dad joke i mean i love a good dad joke (laughs) that's why you love Corey so much (laughs) yeah or a bad joke, whichever way you want to put it, bad or dad joke. <laughs> bad dad jokes yeah. both usually go, they coincide. But yeah, it was a really good week. And um, obviously, new apartment, my couch we're sitting on. Woo yeah. That I got today. Super stoked. Independent lady here. Mm, doing it, baby. It feels really good to be. Not living with your parents? Not living with my parents. <laughs> yeah. And, um, To be on my own, really, um, on my own, on my own for the first time in my adult life, which sounds pathetic. but No, it doesn't. But here I am, and I'm loving it, and I just, again, like, I super cannot wait to keep putting myself first, as Satanism would prescribe. They would. They'd be proud of you. Going into Satanism, I am covering, as we mentioned on Tuesday, the daughter of the founder of modern Satanism, who, again... For those of you who may not have listened to the history hour, um, Anton LaVey was his name. His daughter, one of his daughters, let me say he has two, uh, Zena is the gal I'll be covering. She is, well, first of all, the name is awesome because it reminds me of Zena the Warrior Princess. Yeah, that's what. Did you ever watch that shit back in the day? No, it made me think there, isn't there like some game? Oh, that's Zelda. Oh, Zelda, okay. My dad played Zelda, but no, Zena with an X- I think X E N A was Xena the Warrior Princess. And I used to watch that shit all the time. No, I was more of a gem girl. Oh, the cartoon? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. I didn't watch it, but yeah. I loved it as a kid. Um, I probably should not have been watching this shit. I watched this in Hercules with Kevin Sorbo. And I don't he know was, any like, of these so things. So hot. I don't know anything. He's like a typical, like, long haired, big hunk and like. Everything you're talking about right now is going over again, my head. Again, you with the TV references, I got it. You got to get you on board here. <laughs> like, come on, girl. I'm not watching Xenia tonight. I will not make that promise. I couldn't make you do that if I tried because it's probably so bad if we look Oh, back. I'm sure it is. But I loved it as a kid. <laughs> Anywho, so Xena is one of LaVey's daughters. And her today she goes by Xena Shrek, which was her married last name. She, she took her ex-husband's last name. She's about 55. And at just 55, she has lived one hell of a life and there's no pun intended there like she is kind of a badass and has been through some shit as you can imagine with her father being well her dad seemed very different i don't know how you could live a normal life with him as your dad yeah exactly and something i'll get into a little later is a little trigger warning around the potential incest with her dad Mm -hmm. now satanism's not looking as good but they're always to be honest I can say that, but it's like any good group, there's going to, if there's a large enough group, you're going to have some bad apples. Of course, when like power gets to a certain point. Well, it's not like he loved the media. He loved, he ate off the attention. So I feel like for him, he's probably like, Satanism sounds even more extreme. The more attention I'm going to get, the more outlandish things I say, the more things I'm going to say that piss off like the Christians, the majority. I don't know. It seems like to me, you just like, Attention whore. A rabble rouser too. Yeah, exactly. Zena is 
again, crazy cool, but wildlife at just 55. She has been listed as an artist of all sorts. Singer, songwriter, musician, composer, performance artist, photographer, visual artist, author, and religious teacher. So she's one of those annoying people who can do it all. Yeah, you know. Those people are annoying. <laughs> no, they are. But after researching her a little bit more, I kind of really dig her. But a lot of her, uh, no surprise, music influences came from mystical and magical traditions, right? Again, her dad's sort of modern Satanism, so... And he did believe in ghosts and the paranormal and all that stuff. Yeah, and I think she might too. I didn't really get into that much with her, but it, I could see that she would. So, Xena, a person that can do it all, again, fuck you people out there. From Bewitch Banter, with love. <laughs> <laughs> love the Bewitches. Uh, Xena was born in San Francisco to Anton LaVey, as we said, and her mother, Diane Higarty. And they were both the co-founders of the Church of Satan. But he wasn't with her when the church split, right? Is someone else? I think so, yeah. Or he was with her mom. I don't, I think they split. To start, I'm going to share a very odd and kind of disturbing, but like funny disturbing. Um, But it's funny in that her dad, Anton LaVey, looks like a total clown, like an asshat. And this video is of Zena's baptism into the Church of Satan. It was one of the most highly publicized and recorded videos worldwide um, for the consumption of this album called the Satanic Mass LP. And it was the first audio recording by any high priest of LaVey's in his home, which was again called the Church of Satan or the Black House. Do we know what year? 1967. Okay, so it's pretty old. Yeah, so let me show it to you right quick. Fucking douche. And there's a, let's just set the stage. Was a naked woman on an altar slash like, almost like a doctor bed. He looks like a total ass clown. Like he's wearing this like cape with fake ass horns and like a wand in front of this altar with this naked ass woman. And like a poor little three-year-old. I don't know. That's, see like, I love the, maybe I love the philosophy, but the actual practice. Well, we did say we're going to try to do our own investigation. I wonder if they're all that weird, just LaVey. I think LaVey was a fucking weirdo. But as you can see, like, that was really disturbing. Um, And this poor three-year-old sitting here, like, in this bizarre environment. And he used that video as audio again on his LP, which was released in 1968. And then it was re-released as um, an album in a 1995. Okay, so I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid anymore. Yeah. I spilled my Kool-Aid. <laughs> she dropped the cup. Uh, sorry, the, so just so you guys know, that was also from the archive. I think that's important to share from CBS 5 from 1987. Well, can we just share it on Facebook? Or excuse me, 1967. Yes, we will absolutely share it. So you guys can take your own opinion. If you want to keep joining the Satanism cool or not, then for me, I think needless to say at the age of three. But that's not modern Satanism. Right. That's, yeah, so that, that's because there's different branches and that's Leve- they call it Levian Satanism. Yes, and for that reason, I think is why Zena later in life, which I'll get into a little more, basically denounced, renounced Levainism and as a whole and her father. Because of this, needless to say, also she was exposed to the public eye very early on, just starting at three years old. And frankly, to me, like that video and just being being forced to be exposed like that as a child, I think that's kind of like borderline child abuse, but. I, yeah, I don't think it was, I think it's okay he wanted to do that, but I don't think he needed to use the visual of his daughter being in it. Yeah, I, I agree. And so that, that was upsetting to me because she couldn't say yes or no, right? She was like forced to be in it and she's just three years old and this weird shit's happening. And of course, that's all she knows. Clearly raised unconventionally in this, in her father's church of Satan. But because of that early video, I think, and also probably because her dad's eccentricity, I think she had a natural knack for media and PR. And she rose to international fame very quite early in life after her baptism. And as a teen, she became the Church of Satan's first spokeswoman 
in or excuse me young adult young woman she was a a teen i don't believe in the 80s but um she so from the 80s to about 1990 she she was the front woman for the church while her father was alive or after he passed away while he was alive but he did end up dying shortly before she was like fucking deuces i thought she, she was still condoning the church at that point I think up until, like, right after his death, she was like, nah. And we're going to get into why in just a second. Okay, I'm curious, because most of my research I came across was good, but I was obviously doing a more generalization. Yeah, and also, like, the other the other sect may be less wacky than LeVay himself, you know? Yeah, and I think I didn't really talk about this in the history. There are, I believe, like, people who actually do worship the devil, but obviously I was covering, I was trying to focus more on, like, the religion of... Like the churches and temples that have been organized. Gotcha. Um, okay, so she is the spokeswoman for the church. And she does this up until the 1990s, like I said, until she eventually denounces her father as a whole and the church altogether. And I'll get into why a little bit. Yeah, I kind of, I'm like, why? I want to know. <laughs> but in the meantime, Zena took on and handled hundreds of media blitzes, especially in tabloid crime and men's magazines. Um, that focused around the satanic panic as you covered and obviously that was such a hot topic at mm-hmm. the time satanism really needed a pr person to be like handling all those inquiries and his little daughter then a young woman was it um so i'd have to say from like just a general human's perspective and like a pr perspective she like handled the stress of the scrutiny quite gracefully being so young and being thrust into that kind of yeah, role. I mean, that'd be a hard role to have. So I thought that was pretty cool. But on top of being forced to be the masthead for her father's church, essentially again from the age of three, she also became a mom at just 14 years old. Whoa, that's young. Yeah. And this is where you're going to be like, fuck you, LaVey. And at just two weeks after, or after, just two weeks after having her son, she was forced to move out of the Black House, which again was the Black Pope's Church of Satan headquarters um, in San Francisco. And it left her obviously destitute, right? Like she's a wow, 14-year-old kid awful. with a new baby. Neither Anton or her mother supported her Aww. financially. That's like against everything they preach. Yeah. What hypocrites. Yeah. And what grossed me out even more was this little quote from LaVey's biographer, Burton H. Wolf. He described, quote, 13-year-old Dina in his introduction of the Satanic Bible as such. Ugh, so gross. I can, ugh. Zena remembered by people who saw the famous photo of the Satanic baptism as a tiny top. But now she's a gorgeously developed teenager attracting a growing pack of wolves. Of the human male variety. Ew. Isn't that disgusting? Yeah, that's gross. So, like, there's these nasty-ass, like, old men uh, commenting on her. One, and two, like, bleh. You're forcing her into this spotlight that she never had any fucking choice in. Mm -hmm. Like, not okay with that. Um, In fact, she told Bethany Lee of the Guardsmen about a, quote, stifling and dysfunctional family life. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sorry, but if your dad's the father of Satanism, yeah. I feel like your life's going to be pretty damn interesting. Pretty fucking weird and interesting also yeah. at the same time. Uh, below the article that I read in The Guardsman, there was one comment that was really disturbing to me. And again, I don't believe any of this has been necessarily proven. But if it is true, it's really some good context for why Zena would be like, fuck you, dad fuck your church hmm i'm curious it's really disturbing so this is a comment on the article in 2017 by nora cagle like cagle Cagle. muscles (laughs) (laughs) both of our minds went there all right quote in the old radio interviews from the 1980s on youtube zena is said she was grateful for how unlike most single mothers her parents supported her so that contradicts uh, what I had just said, but I'm gonna, let me go on. That her parents had supported her when she got pregnant by accident. In this interview, she mentions that it wasn't so rosy, that they made her move out sooner, or soon after her son was born, more like a typical family might do, um, who 
maybe are Christian. Well, I don't know. <laughs> that's the editorialism right here. That's so opposite of what they preach. Because they're like, the whole thing was supposed to be like, don't live by society norms of what people think you should be doing in life. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Right. And this is, again, it's going to get a little nastier here. Um, even worse, this woman writes, I read the rumor that she was raped by her own father in three different books. What? From Lisa Carver, Burton Wolf, and Marilyn Marinick. Did she ever actually f- come out and straight say this, or the reader, the investigator, just reading into the situation? Yeah, yeah, those three authors wrote in their books that they speculated that's what happened. Okay, speculated. Okay, yeah. so we don't know. So we don't know for a fact. No. Okay. Um, in the uh, attention, um, again, who knows? He and his girlfriend tried to beat up Lisa Carver, who wrote one of the books, for publishing such a rumor. I mean, if it, if, if it wasn't true, when you want to beat someone up? Yes. Yes. But they were pissed, obviously, of his being the product of incest in the past. Some of us would like to know the truth of what took place in this family, since nobody has cared enough to ever write a biography of Anton LaVey that was actually honest so far. I hope the rape rumor is not true, but I've always wondered why Zena felt abused and why she had to get away. Something clearly was amiss, somewhere. If she truly was abused sexually or even psychologically somehow, when my heart goes out to her, I'm very glad she survived whatever her background really was, has made something of herself, and seems to want to encourage others to do the same. I wish there were still more free colleges for young women who deserve a chance. Kudos to the City College for doing that back in the day. What does that have to do with anything? I'm going to get into that. Okay, I was like, what? The Guardsman article kind of centers around Zena's attendance at the City College in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, and then how she went on to get her arts degree. And I'll get into why that matters. But, okay. Uh, if any of that is true, it's obviously horrific uh, to answer your question. And if it is, what a fucking like inspiration for all women out there who are starving artists and just women in general. Like, you're going to survive that shit Mm -hmm. and become famous and, like, handle that shit? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be a hard way, like, if it's true, that's tragic. If Even if it's not true, like, the fact that she had to live with, with, like, all eyes on her. Yeah. And I'm sure her dad was, like, one of the most hated people by the media. Oh, yeah. So that would have been really hard just to live with. Yeah. Grow up with. Yeah, like, your dad being written and spoken about mostly probably all the time terribly yeah i mean it's like having not the same but be like if your dad was the president i mean that, that's a little extreme um comparison yeah, but still but if i feel like being a president's daughter would be awful too oh god forget it god bless sasha malia mm. no thank you <laughs> i would hate that hey one goes to michigan i know i think it's malia but i don't know could be sasha but anyway again if it's true it's disgusting and Zena, to me, is kind of an inspiration for rising above all this. And despite all that shit that was put on her shoulders, she continued her mission or role as the Church of Satan's PR lead. She joined and also later performed a badass, or excuse me, she joined and also formed a badass rock band called Radio Werewolf. I don't listen clearly because it's mostly goth slash punk. Um, But she'd go on to perform a plethora of other genres in her performing arts career. Oh, cool. And by the way, she lives in Berlin right now, which I believe is like super gothy musically. I could see that. Um, Not sure if that's accurate, but I think it is. We can fact check with historian Corey. <laughs> but anyway, so from electro, acoustic, sound art, field recording, post-industrial, ambient, neoclassic, gothic, post-punk, goes on. So obviously she's really talented in music and in performing arts. Her musical influence, again, was largely inspired by the magical and mystical world of her father, but also by her godfather and filmmaker Kenneth Anger, which is a really interesting last name. But anyway, (laughs) Um, Anger is described as a filmmaker, actor, and author, and occultist. So obviously part of the church. Yeah. And he works exclusively um, in short films. Later, Zena would appear in another film, not by Anger, but by another godfather-type friend and figure in her life, the director Curtis Harrington, where she played a Dietrich-like character. And I think that's a reference to an old, like, vampire-like movie. Oh, okay. 
So again, on top of handling all the media blitz as a teenager and young woman, in 1985, Zena became a high priestess of the Church of Satan, and she got herself an education all on her own after being kicked out of the house with a baby okay. at 14 years old. She passed the high school equivalency exam and left high school early just so that she could study drama at the City College of San Francisco. So did she ever do anything with the church again? Um, Yes. Are we going to talk about it? Yeah, I will. Here, though, she learned acting, music, and performance art, as I said. And back then, California was still offering free tuition at any of its community colleges. And again, in this 2016 Guardsman piece, Zena is like still to this day a proponent of free education. Okay, that's cool. Which I totally dug. And I think you and I both can as educators. So um, she said, I know that there are many young people who also experience such discouragements and hindrances in instances where families fail young creative people and there are no state supported educational educational possibilities like the community college of san francisco was to me then i fear that this is a recipe for disaster end quote meaning this was when a time when california as a state was um, voting on to continue free education Mm -hmm. at the community college level. And she was speaking on how if they don't continue the free education. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Which we're fucked fucked anyway in the education system as we know, but yeah. (laughs) Anyway, she's badass and progressive in that fact that she's all about the free education because since she was kicked out at 14, she was afforded this awesome opportunity. And by the way, she must be really fucking smart. Yeah. She has to be really smart, really smart. Right. To, get past this high school exam on your own and then get into college and and just all with taking care of a baby yeah i can't imagine so pretty damn inspiring to me as i said um she later went on to found the band radio werewolf and marry her bandmate nicholas shrek in 1988 she kept his his last name and they sadly divorced in 2015 i think likely because he was a racist piece of shit (laughs) i'll get into that in a second who is it? Nicholas Shrek is his name. I've never heard of him. He was her bandmate in this in this oh, okay. this okay. Uh, goth band, okay. Radio Werewolf. Colin. And again, they divorced 2015, but in 2019, they both issued a statement written jointly saying that after being separated t- since 2007, we've agreed to amicably b- divorce. Conscious uncoupling. No, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> they probably did say that. Oh, shit. She, again, retain- chose to retain her married surname, which was Shrap. Here's why he's a total fucking piece of shit, though. Okay. There was a little bit of a riot in the 80s during the Satanic Panic, okay. and there were people kind of, like, protesting against it. Meanwhile... Against the riot or against the... Against Satanism. And... Shrek, basically her her ex-husband, totally just went on peddling about his hatred towards people in general and like mixed people, eugenicist ideas, like, and just eradicating entire populations of people. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So total Nazi vibe. It needs to be canceled. Yeah. There is actually, now you say that. I came across my research because I know I kind of went positive, but there's obviously branches that aren't so great. There was a Nazi. Um, I kind of wanted you to cover it. The nine order of nine angels or whatever. Oh, well, OK. So that didn't come up in, in my research, but he very well might have been a part of it. It's like the order of nine angels. And I think they were like a Nazi group that was considered Satanist. Satanist. He might very well might have joined that because, yeah, he, he was a total fucking piece of shit. And. You know, in the meantime, to answer your question, Zena's still out there peddling her dad's views and the religion. Mm-hmm. She's helping him promote the book uh, that his, her dad writes, The Complete Witch, or What to Do When Virtue Feels, was then reprinted as The Satanic Witch. And Zena even wrote the introduction in her father's book. So she's out there touring for her dad, doing all the shit for the religion, trying to keep it together. And, you know, it just... I don't know, it just bothers me so much that she was like forced into doing this. And in 1989, while promoting the book, Zena and her husband, then her then husband, again, Nicholas Shrek, um, who was not, he was not a member of the Church of Satan, actually, but he was just um, out there for publicity, basically. You know, they just, he went on a rant about like how 
we need to clear a whole generation of people. And then later, Geraldo Rivera comes on the fucking scene and we know how controversial he is. And he's interviewing them and um, tries to call them out on like all the press that the satanic panic is happening, basically. And it just like totally like went basically all just for publicity for her ex-husband to make a scene and like put on a show for the cameras about being a racist essentially okay so they gave him a platform yeah just just view his hate basically basically yep 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 so they interviewed with Geraldo, and you know again he's very controversial Mm -hmm. including this story on satanism tries to press them on like what the fuck are you doing and at this time, again, Zena is a high priestess, and she remained, again, that spokesperson until 1990, forming the Temple of Set, which you covered, as um, the Scythian Liberation Movement. And she also, during the Satanic Panic time, had regular contact with law enforcement. This is where I like her. Okay. So she had regular contact with law enforcement agencies and personnel to dispute and dispel any messaging that people in satanism were raping kids and like doing this sex ring so she actually testified and gave them great evidence and dialogues and like testimonies saying you know this is what satanism is which is what you covered and this is how people are portraying it okay that's fascinating yeah so She really helped the police out because they had very limited knowledge of what Satanism actually was. I didn't have any knowledge until literally I sat down to research and learn. I don't feel like most, if you ask like most people, I don't think they would know what it is. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean, it's not mainstream enough for us to know in the first place, but yeah, I thought it was fascinating. It was not what I thought it was at all. Yeah, so I mean, okay, so she's thrust into this spotlight. She's got to get at fucking 14, yet she still peddles her dad's book, right? And she's fighting the good fight for her dad despite maybe being raped by him god damn it ella <laughs> oh no so Zena, as we know three years old thrust into the spotlight mm-hmm. potentially may or may not have been raped by her own father we don't know yet she's still going on to, she has a kid at 14 kicked out the house still goes on to help her dad with this whack-ass religion and then even goes on to get her own education on her own and then help law enforcement and still promotes like free arts and free education. So to me, kind of fucking dig it. Awesome. No, I I like it. Again, by helping the law, this is the most salient point to me for kind of stuff we love and cover. In 1992, because of her help, the FBI issued an official report featuring the criminal conspiracy theories of this time. So basically she helped them set the record straight that this was all bullshit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, so today, Zena is a Buddhist. And she, and again, has totally renounced her dad and the religion joining the Temple of Set. Did she ever say why? Not publicly, she, except for she kind of realized the trauma and there's a little bit of a quote from here here uh that alludes to why okay um and she also teaches tibetan tantric buddhism on her website it says drawing on her own triumph over these other dysfunctional family experiences i'll say yeah (laughs) (laughs) zina is a professional bereavement counselor so again like this helping people in the community that you talk yeah that's really cool she founded the satan sethian liberation movement movement's public outreach program called phoenix ironically all caps and this program helps others similar in similar situations as hers and in it explains that um, since 2004 phoenix provides spiritual healing for victims of other exploitative pseudo religions and organizations former gang members whistleblowing ex-employees of corrupt organizations (laughs) and government agencies relatives of the violent, violently mentally ill, and survivors of all forms of institutional abuse, including the secretly abused children and spouses of prominent personalities, end quote. Nice. So, like, to answer your question, in a nutshell, I really think she was abused. Well, I know she was, mm-hmm. because she was never asked to be a three-year-old in this weird-ass satanic shit. And if not physical, it was definitely emotionally abuse, and 
she was kind of probably thrown into a world of like never really fitting in because like Mm -hmm. most of us have parents with quote unquote what you call normal jobs and I think being having someone who's called like the black pope or black what is he called Yeah, yeah black pope the black pope can't probably make for a normal upbringing because i'm sure like you probably didn't have people over at your sleepovers growing up i bet she was probably isolated a lot as a kid unless there were like other families in the church that she got to know maybe yeah she had a half sister named carla and it's her it looked like through my research that i wasn't obviously focused on carla but carla the half sister and um lave's lover were fighting over the estate at the end of the day when he uh, died. And by the way, for a man who preached wealth and self-indulgence, he was only worth 60K at the end of the day. That's all he had. I mean, which is barely a salary, you know, yeah. these days. Mm-hmm. So, but it didn't mention Dina involved in any of that. Because I think she, you know, woke to, like, I got to do my own shit, you know, as, as evidenced by her being kind of a badass on her own. Yeah, because kind of what I read was like she was unhappy with the way the church moved forward. That's all I knew. Yeah, and I think that's definitely the public messaging probably. But after doing this research, I really think there was some serious abuse going on. Yeah. But again, that's speculation. Yeah. Um, I want to circle it all back around to today um, and the anxieties of the satanic panic and how they um, – we're not really focused on the right thing because what was underneath it all, bowing back to Zena's ex-husband, was white supremacy. So instead of focusing on the uh, fucking fascists and racists that were bubbling up underneath the guise of the satanic panic, they focused on this the sex ring that was was not even a thing. So the panic was all these moral, like righteous people, not even looking at these underlying people promoting racist beliefs, frankly, and it morphed into QAnon, actually. Yeah, I know. When we do our satanic um, panic, that seems like such a mouthful. Or what is it? It was a satanic panic, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, when we do that, we should definitely, one of us should cover QAnon. Yeah, I mean, the Q, that will take a couple episodes, I'll be honest, because it's so, it's wild, it's racist, it is anti-Semitic, it is everything. But they say, like, because uh, I was, like, when I was looking into Satanism, obviously Satanic Panic kept coming up in my search, and it was, like, Satanic Panic is still happening today, but it's in the form of QAnon and other yeah. groups. Other yep, groups. exactly right. But I think we should definitely do, and that would be a fun a good thing to cover. Yeah, I, I'm into that. And I just, it's insane how, like, how did that shit get overlooked? You know what I mean? Like, it, that disgusts me. Like, I know it's like herd mentality, but like, how, how can you be so concerned with shit that's not even happening and yet go turn a blind eye to this, this underbelly of, of like complete, that shitness uh, that is now QAnon, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> it really is. But it's all whole, all this conspiracy bullshit. And, and it's just really sad that it's still, you know, it's just coming on today. And um, unfortunately, like you said, there are some sects of Satanism that are still of subscribing to those beliefs. Yeah. I mean, I feel like any big group, like, I kind of, the way I kind of thought about it is like Muslims. It's a very peaceful, uh, loving religion. But then obviously there's the extremists that we all know. And those few people have to kind of ruin the reputation for a large majority of the people who practice. Exactly. That's kind of how I see Satanism because I feel like there are some really bad apples, bad people, or people who call themselves Satanists, but they're not actually a member of the like the temple set or different branches but again i do feel like if you call yourself a satanist you're kind of asking for some scrutiny but my story are you finished with yours so i just wanted to say like despite that depressing (laughs) ending uh xena is a real inspiration i think to this day awesome job but mine's gonna be a turn so it's gonna be very positive oh let's do it
Okay, so we had to get low because that's what we do here at Bewitch Banter. We got to take like, it down, yeah. going back up. Yeah. Well, humanity sometimes can be a little disappointing. Thank you to my point. Every episode, people are shitty. So what I'm going to cover, though, it's going to be a good Yay. one. And so when I was searching what to do, I saw the following. Fortune Magazine published an article saying, Why Satanists May Be the Last Hope to Take Down the Texas Abortion Bill. I found another article that said, How the Satanic Temple is Using Abortion Rituals to Claim Religious Liberty Against the Texas Heart Bill. Hell yeah. The Guardian published an article called Devil's Advocate. Are Satanists Now the Good Guys in the Fight Against Evangelical Rights? Fuck yeah. Another uh, article is Hail Satan, the Satanist Battling for Religious Freedom. Holy well, shit. And I was like, I insist on this. Oh, yeah. She would love this. She would probably eat this up. But first of all, I was like, damn, they don't have to be dramatic with headlines, right? Oh, yeah. But again, I was intrigued. So I was That's like, the art, baby. <laughs> even before I could even get to it, I was like, Sis- your sister being a gynecologist would totally get behind this. Yeah, anything to save women's health and rights. absolutely. fucking lutely And I, like, dig their sensibilities, and I kind of like how they, like, give a big finger to the man. <laughs> yes. I'm all for all it. All about it. You know I am. So they are currently filming a documentary uh, it's filmed by Penny Lane, which is called Hail Satan. And I need a like fact. Like the Beatles, Penny Lane? Penny Lane. I mean, he might have been named after know. that. <laughs> I don't know who Penny Lane is, really, but I thought Ooh, I would give them I'm credit Corey where credit is due. <laughs> What'd you say? That I'm telling Corey on you. Oh, I never, <laughs> I've been to Penny Lane, actually. I got a little... Oh. A little... I'm acting like pic- I'm more woke in your Englishness than, than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never Bitch, mind. I'm calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> the documentary is called Hail Satan. Now, I need to fact check this. I need to see if it's out already, because I didn't check the year... I think the article was written like last year, so maybe it's out. We will check. So it's called Hail Satan. I'm not sure if it's out yet. I will check. But the article is written around 2020. And it follows the temple where the Satanists fight back on the overtake of Christianity on U.S. life and its political influence. Whoa. They are fighting for humanism rights, and their mission, mission statement is the following. Quote, To encourage benevolence and empathy among all people, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense and justice, and be directed by the human conscience to undertake noble pursuits guided by the individual will. Fuck yeah. And one of their main missions, which I could totally get behind and I absolutely love, is to keep the United States a secular country. Yes. Which is like, I was funny saying amen. (laughs) Amen! Amen! (laughs) But still, like, that's what we are supposed to be, mm-hmm. like a country for all people, no matter what your faith is or background is. Yep. So one example, um, a lot of us probably know this story, is in Oklahoma State Capitol. There's a monument dedicated to the Ten Commandments. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so, again, that shows favoritism. That's Towards not secularism. Christianity, yeah. So they have asked as like a... I love what they do because it's very outlandish, but it, some of the stuff they do, it's really outlandish, but it does a great job of portraying how we're not a secular country. So they asked, shouldn't be. Hmm? Shouldn't be, but we are, unfortunately. Yeah. And they asked the state of Oklahoma to allow them to build their own statue of a deity, uh, Baphomet, which as uh, a, a version of the devil, to restore a religious balance. Hmm. Okay. That's fair to me. And uh, if anyone, and I, we will, we should definitely post a picture of what Baphomet actually looks like. Because it's like an image of, I'm sure you guys know it, but probably have seen it, like a goat with, like a devil with wings. Like, mm-hmm. have you seen that devil? I feel like I was reading in my research that the Sabrina Teenage Witch Netflix series used it in their set. And they, this church or maybe a, sec, a different sect tried to sue them because they like ripped off their Baphomet. Oh, but maybe I, not. It could be. That'd be interesting to, we should look into it. So this group has over, so it's not a small group. It's a group of 50,000 members. And I know it sounds like freaking outlandish to ask the government to allow a statue of Baphomet as a monument. But it's like they're doing it as a stunt. It. And like, it's an extreme way to show like, 
Because if they asked for any other normal statue, the government, it wouldn't have caused the headlines. Oh, but, but what they'll they're, keep up Henry E. Lee or whatever. What is his name? The civil rights bullshit. Oh, yeah, exactly. But, like, it's, like, a way to be, ex- they're being extreme, and it's, like, kind of showing and portraying how, well, how come you favor this religion but not other religions? Yeah, exactly. And in the court of law, technically, that shit needs to be considered. Mm-hmm. And they, that definitely will happen in this story. Yay! So I actually love this uh, organization. They're, like, amazing, and they give back to their community in such huge ways. So in the documentary, they show that they uh, encourage their followers to donate blood. They collect clothes for the homeless. They clean up trash in public areas. And I thought this was really cute. Like, they use pitchforks, like a devil's pitchfork, to pick up the trash sometimes. Oh, that is cute, actually. (laughs) I was like, it's gimmicky and just weird, but I can get behind it. It makes work, though. Shit. But one thing they do that I was kind of like, oh, that's a little weird, is they do host Black Mass where they do call on Satan. Okay. But when it's explained, it they explain why, it kind of makes sense to me. Right. Again, like, I kind of covered in my, like, overview of Satanism. They're very on theme with a lot of other Satan branches. Mm-hmm. They don't actually believe in Satan. And they're kind of through this acknowledging that religion is something people believe in, but there's no proof. Like they're like almost their philosophy is making commentary on what other commentary, sorry, about how other people follow religion so blindly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we all know. I remember the day um, the Heart Bill was passed in September. Mm-hmm. Like my social media was flocked with images of like hands made tail, and it's kind of like. What's scary to me is like when they pass one thing, it's like, okay, this is not only a war on women in Texas, it's going to be able to be a trickle down movement where they do it everywhere, which is terrifying. Yeah, that's exactly what my sister explained it as. And I go, well, it's just Texas, right? And she said exactly what you just said. She said, no, it impacts me, me legally being able to do my job or not. Thank God, Illinois, I don't think would ever pass. But you don't know. Like, you never know. And that's the scary thing. Well, that's like, why she never moved here to practice. Like, because she could have went to Banner at, for her residency. Mm-hmm. And she's like, there's no fucking way I'm going to a red state because at that time we weren't purple. Yeah, I can see that. I think they're coming for, um, I don't know. Here, probably, yeah. Here next. Who knows? They probably will. But the bill was, um, the heartbeat bill was signed by Governor Kemp on May 7th, 2019, bringing into effect one of the most or one of the strictest abortion laws in the country at all time. So the bill would prohibit abortions once a heartbeat could be detected. And uh, that's usually when a woman is about six weeks pregnant. And this bill was created basically to be able to skip judicial review, and they estimate that over 85% of abortions happen after six weeks. I mean, most people don't know they're pregnant at this point. So it's a total attack on women's rights. And they're trying to keep the minor, um, minorities and just people who have no money, keep them down. Yeah, because because if you can't get in Texas and you don't have the means to travel. Yeah, they're the ones who are going to be the ones who are struggling the most. If you don't, Because if you're poor, you probably don't have access to go and travel to another state where you can get safe care. Safe, exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. This is so um, on par with all the conversations <laughs> my sister and I have. And, you know, if a woman's going to – if a woman doesn't want a pregnancy, we will find a way, whether – no matter what. And, unfortunately, if these types of laws keep going, it will often end up in uh, dangerous and unhealthy uh, terminations of pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And this, to me – I remember when this happened. I was like, oh, God, am I living in Hands May Tale? But this is the part. Remember when they brought that um, whole initiative forward that if you ratted someone out, they would give you $10,000? Oh, my God. I think I missed that part. What? So if you knew of someone who was helping someone get an abortion you and you called, like, the police hotline, they would give, like, you could get a $10,000 tip. Wow. Okay, yeah, I'm, I think I blacked that out maybe. God. But that to me doesn't even feel like real life saying that out loud. Why would you think – I'm so baffled. I don't have anything to say. I'm just like, no. Then later we found out the U.S. Supreme Court declared it couldn't block the law, which was like 
I just remember everyone more on I'm I know more on like a lot of people who agree with our opinion on pro choice. Like it was a sad day. I was like, really? Like, look at what we've been handed the past few years. Like we had Trump as our president and now this shit? Come on. Like, why do I live here? No, honestly, I mean, I remember saying I was going to move to Toronto when he won. Oh, you and every other American. Uh, well, I got friends there. So. <laughs> I'm moving. I'm like, oh, yeah, because they're going to take you? Okay, cool. I know, I know. And they're actually, like, the strictest ones on COVID. So, like, we couldn't even get there. <laughs> like, Lauren Zuck, like, smuggled their BB in, basically, <laughs> this winter or this summer. I like, <laughs> <laughs> told on you guys. <laughs> so, talking about the government. So, the IRS has recognized the Satanic Temple as a religion, and therefore the group decided Fuck to fight yeah. back and say that their religious rights were being infringed upon and that this violates the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. And in this argument, they say that the abortion restrictions infringe upon their rights. Fuck yeah. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act was enacted in 1993 and restricted the government ability to burden religious practices. And I thought this was super interesting. Um, the actual act came from, uh, or originated in 1990, and this is because they denied a Native American church the legal right to smoke peyote as a wow. sacred act. In response to this, this caused the Congress to write an act which they signed into law saying that they, were in, in, they couldn't do that. Good. So I'm ashamed to admit... <laughs> I actually got some of my uh, Christmas decorations from Hobby Lobby because capitalism got the best of me. <laughs> it was a uh, 50% off and I saw on Instagram and I was like, that shit's cute. So I'm not always a woke warrior and I did get some of their stuff. Well, I mean, they do have some cute stuff. So that's why I'm time out. I have barely shopped there, but I did want to admit my wrongdoings. I know we vote yeah. with our wallet. I don't go very much. Why am I bringing up Hobby Lobby? We probably all know. But in 2014, it was ruled that the government could, uh, couldn't could force upon Hobby Lobby's rights. They're infringing on their rights, right? Because they're considered a Christian company and they didn't want to provide insurance for their employees to cover an abortion. Mm -hmm. This ruling, however, has actually inspired the satanic temple to think about how they could use this argument so the government can't impede on their religious rights or the their belief that people should have the right to choose and be pro-choice and that the government can't meddle in women's reproductive rights you know what's really dorky sorry i'm just so fucking happy i'm straight obviously clapping and now i'm pumping my arms <laughs> and i know it's a real finger snap finger snap <laughs> We literally just did that. You just did that. I did it on your own. <laughs> on cue. So one of the seven tenets of the temple is the following. I think I, and I read this last time. So one's body is inviolable subjects to one's own will alone. AKA, basically it's my body and I can do whatever the fuck oh, I want. Damn right. Except, okay, I know we talked about this before, but I got to bring it up since we're talking about pro-life um, slash pro-choice. How the fuck can it be my body, my choice when it comes to not wearing a mask, but all of a sudden a woman says my body, my choice regarding her desire and right to choose whether or not she wants to fucking be pregnant, not be okay. Fuck off, mic drop. Fuck you. Yeah, I, I 100%, I feel like all their arguments are so hypocritical. They don't, and let's say I was to like, then it's a global pandemic their actions are impacting people globally yep. it's a community crisis your choice of not getting vaccinated impacts the community oh, someone wow. getting an abortion does not impact the community right tell me how the personal very personal and familial famili familial choice yeah but like to me the whole it's my choice my body i don't have to get and um, wear a mask i'm like no it's you decided to live in a community this is a global health pandemic, and your actions are impacting other people's health. Mm -hmm. That's when it's not fair. Oh, uh, yeah. Again, hypocrites as fuck. I just, I can't. Okay, back to the good stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I thought we were doing positivity here. <laughs> so another example of the satanic church fighting for women's rights to choice happened in 2015 as well. Hmm. So they filed a lawsuit against mi misery or Missouri. Missouri. I actually, when I see the word misery... Or Missouri. I did again. I, I just say misery. I don't even know how to read it now, right? <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you live there. Okay, so misery, Missouri, made women review a booklet, which was basically a guilt trip on women before they um, were about to, like, 
ha- like have an abortion, right? So one passage tells them that life starts as soon as contraception happens oh. in the booklet. It is also a requirement that they read this booklet, but then they go home for another 72 hours to consider if they want to move forward. That would not happen with any other procedure in the world. Especially, oh, and for because it's a woman, she has to go home and think about it. Right. Okay, but it, she says to have her own agency on her own to think with her own brain. Fuck you. But this part is going to make us both sad because, you know, America. <laughs> Pretty much. So the satan- satanic temple fought that the state was forcing its re- religious views on vulnerable women. Mm-hmm. They fought this ar- argument when a woman that they did not release her name for, like, obviously, I can understand. They called her Mary Doe, right? So the satanic temple fought that the state was forcing its religious views on vulnerable women, right? And, like, just in a horrible situation, no one wants to get an abortion. It's because... They had, like, that's the best choice for them. But they fought this argument. There was a woman in Missouri, or Missouri. I can't even say it. Okay. Uh, Missouri. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It just, misery got stuck in my head. So they fought this argument, and they didn't want to release her name, obviously, for a protector. So they call her Mary Doe, okay? So Mary Doe was going to get an abortion in Missouri. I said it. And... They did the same practice, got to read this booklet, go home for 72 hours, blah, blah, blah. So they sue the state for this. But because the judicial system is so slow, like, you know how long it takes to get to a case. By the time they actually went to address the case, Mary Doe was no longer pregnant. And then as a way not to face the lawsuit, they say that the group had no legal standing since she was no longer pregnant and she no longer needed an abortion. So I know our blood is all boiling at this point. But let's remember, I'm trying to, that how progressive this is and look at the the group like what even if they're not getting things passed like there's 50,000 people in this group and it's nice to like the more we keep pushing back the more we can get progress going towards the right way it should go so it's not going to happen overnight but by these things happening it does put in front of the supreme court or it does put in front of the court it gets people talking about it And that's really, you have to remember, like, these things don't happen overnight. But now this group is smart. Uh, They decided to create an abortion ritual. And in this ritual, so the ritual literally is, a woman celebrates her autonomy. So she says, I have the freedom to choose. I am going to have an abortion. Uh, In the ritual, she obtains an abortion, and that's the end of the ritual. Because now they have created a sacred religious ritual around a woman having an abortion procedure done, the government is now interfering with communion or baptism. Oh, they're so smart. I know. They definitely have a lawyer. Fuck yeah. Get it, lawyers. They also filed another lawsuit stating that Ando's religious liberty was violated by them denying her right to a fair trial. So the next part is going to sound very lawyerish, so try to follow. Uh, so the argument against the satanic group is that the abortion is a medical procedure and has nothing to do with religion. Okay, that's black and white. The Satanist argue, co- argument comes from a case in 2009 that a pastor in Texas had a halfway house and the government stated that he was violating a zoning ordi- ordinance. The Satanists argue that they violated his religious freedom to the halfway house and the government counted his halfway house as a secular thing. So... They are saying something can be secular and religious. I don't really follow it, but I feel like lawyers probably could do a much better job of... Okay, so I guess I'm lost on how is a halfway house. So it's a religious establishment, but the government said, nope, you're um, infringing upon the zoning ordinance, so you need to move your halfway house, and they considered it secular. So they're like, say, the government's saying something can be secular and religious. Okay, so 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 the lawyers are are saying that the government's talking out of both sides of its mouth. Yeah, but they want something to be secular and religious because they're saying an abortion could be a religious thing and a secular thing. Okay, so they so they turned it on its head against the government. Yes, got it. Let me follow, follow that. And I know that was kind of like what, and that's why I'm not a lawyer for several other million reasons. <laughs> For me, it was all the goddamn memorization and reading. Like, I I love media law so much, but, whew. I wouldn't want to fight that much. Hell no. You know I do. I'll come out swinging, but I just... But you can't the, be emotional. You wouldn't be very... You would not be able to keep your temper. 
that's why I'd be really great at being, um, what do you call Not it? a lawyer. <laughs> the one, no, the ones that put on a show. Uh, I know, but I think sometimes you have to know how to keep your cool, though. And yeah, I don't know if you yeah, could do that. No. The group then proceeded to file a lawsuit against the FDA because they were restricting access to abortion pills. They stated that because a doctor has to pursue them and that a doctor has to act in adherence to the state law, that they were infringing on their religious rights and their religious rituals. They fought that a woman should be able to get access to abortion pills through the Satanic Temple after they had received a letter from a doctor stating it's safe for them to use and they wouldn't have to adhere to the, to the FDA regulations this way. Well, I have a question. Sorry. Going back to them performing the abortion. The ritual is kind of a metaphor. Like the woman says, I have freedom to choose. And then they would go safely to a doctor. Got it. That's what I envisioned. But I just wanted to clarify. Okay. So the lawyer of the church said this is pushing it, though, because the temple then would also be a pharmacy. Oh, and because that's that's pretty close to getting to the FDA's not good list. But it would be hard to balance, but they would be handing out the pills at the church. But again, this is all about statements and pushing the boundaries, getting people to talk about it. The opposite side of this, of course, is pissed, and they believe that the satanic temple is finding loopholes not to have to abide to the law. But Lucian Graves, the co-founder, has a good point stating that they aren't trying to infringe on anyone's rights, and really the ones who are abusing the system is Hobby Lobby, who's infringing on their employees' right to cho choose. Fuck yes. Yes, I agree. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there are critics that move forward stating that when a law gets obliterated by so many loopholes, it starts to not stand ground anymore in court cases. And I love this next point. They point out, though, the only people who are benefiting from all these loopholes are Christians. Yes. Fucking exactly. Yeah. And they're like, what about the... Oh, and actually, I'll save it because there's a quote I'm going to end with that actually does such a good job explaining everything. This is exactly what you're saying in your history of like, how the fuck is it cool for like Christian beliefs to be in everything in our government and everything we do in our society yet other religions aren't taken into consideration? That shit is not okay. I think that's kind of the big, one of the main trends of Satanism too. And I'm going to leave it on this quote because I thought it was great. And from the great article I found on the conversation by Joseph Laycock, and this is a quote I found that I really like. This is why constitutional law professor Jay Wexler has encouraged the work of groups like the Satanic Temple, stating the following. Only by insisting on exercising these rights can Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, and everybody else ensure that the court's new religious jurisprudence does not result in the public space occupied exclusively by Christian messages and symbols. Yes. At stake is nothing less than our national public life. End quote. Wow. And that wow. is my story of the Satanists so, fighting the good fight. That's what I was going to call it. Yeah. Fighting for humanism, uh, women. the public, women, uh, fighting for the public's good. Public health. I mean, wow. Yeah. So I told you I brought some you light you into. Brought it up. <laughs> I brought some light into our episodes this week and it's been fun. I love learning about Satanism personally. I thought, wow. Are you still signing up? I don't know. I honestly, <laughs> you know me, I'm never going to go to church, but, or a temple, but I can totally get behind celebrating oneself. Like everyone needs to work on that. We are all our worst critic and like anything's going to make people like take a little time to celebrate who they are find what makes them happy in life. Like, how could I not be behind that? I think anyone would. I don't know if I'm totally against the whole, like, imagery of Satan. And I know a lot of it has to do with, like, romanticism. It has, they do a lot of, like, stuff with literature and art. And, like, a lot of it's, like, music. And it's, like, kind of like a rebellion, which I love the idea of, like, rebelling against the government, the big man. So there's a lot of cool components. I would never personally join, but... I would definitely be open to attending. I don't know if it's something that's open to anyone going. Yeah, we still need to research that. So I'm I'm totally down to like sit in on a, a black mass if if allowed. Um, I I love that, and I just thank you for opening my eyes and listeners' ears and eyes to to the light that actually is within this religion because it, it's like so many things gotten a bad rap at the helm of the fucking patriarchy so yeah and i definitely want to watch the documentary hail satan i don't know 
it's out yet, but we could definitely look into that and let you guys know. I think yeah. it'd be interesting. And I'm really about anything that builds community too. And it seems like it's yeah. building community and they're doing good things. So yeah. how could I be against that? But I know obviously there is like in your story, there is like the theatrical, let's be dark and weird and let's have people <laughs> talk about us. But if it helps with the fucking branding, fine. As long as you're not an actual piece of shit, like – Leve seemed to be potentially. Yeah, I be, I kind of think he was in it more for the fame. Sure. And I think for me, it was hard for me to actually do justice to the religion because it, it was like me in 30 minutes trying to summar- summarize a whole religion with so many branches. And I'd really like to talk about modern Satanism because I think that's completely different. I think probably what I'm covering right now is more modern mm-hmm. Satanism. To me, it's cool. I don't know. So- I mean, I like learning about this stuff, obviously, or I wouldn't have the podcast. <laughs> but it's kind of cool to cover a religion where I'm like, oh, I could kind of get behind that. But I don't really know. I think the reason I can believe in this more is because it seems like it's more of a non-theistic religion. Yeah. So that's probably why it resonates with me more. Mm-hmm. And I'm not really a believer of like a God or I don't know. I don't know what I really truly believe. Who knows? I think that's why it resonated with me more. And yeah. fuck, yeah. If you're going to help women out and, like, fight all these terrible laws being uh, passed by, like, the extreme right, I'm all for yeah, it. And I, I'm so curious to what my sister's opinion is on all these. So you'll have to uh, send me the sources. Or, well, once we post them, I'm going to send them to her because I really want to hear what she thinks about it. And, uh, I mean, I'm sure she's going to be just as happy to hear that a larger group is fighting on her colleagues and women's <laughs> behalf. So. Yeah, so... It was, I think it's a cool one. And happy new year, everyone. I hope you're off to a good start and hope you're not doing some extreme diet that's making you miserable. <laughs> Cause I know a lot of people do that. I mean, I'm obviously we talked at length um, about what we're doing, but I'm not trying to do anything extreme. I'm just trying to take care of myself, mm-hmm. be healthy, but I still have indulgences. Cause I feel like you gotta do that. You gotta live life. If you're like on week two of your extreme diet, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my advice we are the devil on your shoulder yeah. saying fuck off no i i was the devil today again on the shoulder of us both get, making us good jersey mics but uh self-care question mark i would say so <laughs> on that note though i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please re- leave us a review uh we appreciate it more than you know yep we're out there she trying to promote us trying to promote ourselves which is hard to do and don't you think so sometimes? Yeah, it is. It's a weird thing to do. Like, obviously, I know how to promote others and brands is what I study, but oneself is tough, and I'm really proud of us still, so. Yeah, we've came a far, long way. Long way. Send us a note. Tell us what we got right, wrong, what you liked. Please, we want to know, because that's the only way we're going to learn. I know. That's why I'd like to, if we could, if they're willing, it'd be awesome to do an interview with the temple in Tempe to see what they really think, because, like, from what I'm getting is not from a Satanist. It's from the media. So I'd like right. to know if they did a good job explaining what the religion's about. Which, before we wrap, I really want to interview my friend Courtney, who we did a little mini promo with upon launch in October. And again, her her store is Crimson Sage Apothecary. Oh my God, I got that word right for once. And <laughs> she does amazing things, but I got it wrong. Speaking of getting shit wrong in the media, um, I we called her a Wiccan. She's actually not a Wiccan. What is she, a witch? And it's something Nordic witch, and I'm still screwing that up. So I apologize, Courtney. But we do want to have you on, and you come set the record straight with us. What is your practice? How you do it? And she was also featured by um, the Phoenix New Times in uh, Halloween season regarding her practice, and they even got it wrong. So she's like, "Uh uh-uh, let me come on. Let me explain what it is. Not Satanism, obviously, different... uh, branch of uh, she's uh, a devil worshiper. yeah no she's she's rad and uh i want to just apologize for getting it wrong because she's not a wiccan okay cool i'm open to that we're open to any new content really we are learning so much on this journey and i hope you're learning along with us having a few laughs i mean this is what it's all about at the end of the day and i'm gonna say peace be witches peace